I've decided to take a break from my usual rigorous routine of releasing one video every seven months by releasing this video, only a month and a half after the previous. I'm sorry to anyone I've let down. With a few days off work the other week, I decided it was high time we headed back to Omaru, the largest town in North Otago and its surrounding much smaller towns for a weekend away. I bought my trusty Minolta X370S, enough film to sink the Titanic, like that'll ever happen, and my brand spanking new medium format camera, the Pentax 645N, the N standing for nice. Like any good road trip, this one started at the impound lot. Did you know that with enough outstanding parking and traffic violations, the city can legally impound your car until you pay your fees? I didn't. After adding breaking and entering to the list of things that would eventually catch up with me, we were on our way. Since we'd spent a bit of time preparing for the trip, we didn't end up leaving town until late afternoon, which meant we'd have about an hour until the sun went down. Because of this, we only stopped a few times on the way. Once at this lookout, and once down in Karatane. But let's not get ahead of ourselves. Once we'd parked up at what I can only assume is the popular makeout spot for the cool kids due to the graffiti litter around the place, I pulled out my Minolta, preloaded with some Color Plus 200 and shot these absolute f***ing rippers. It's common knowledge that shooting overcast conditions with very little available light on 200 ISO film is what's known in the business as a little bitch move. So I grabbed my Pentax 645 and jammed some Ilford Pan F50 in it. At 5 p.m. in winter, when the forecast is cloudy all weekend, I was ready for action. What have I done? After setting up my tripod, a completely redundant step if I had used any of the other film available to me, I shot this. Now, I know what you're thinking, but alas, this wasn't a Christmas miracle, merely some bullshit that happens sometimes when you shoot film. I really don't know what happened here, uh, whether it was a problem with development or a bad batch of film. At this point, I'm so used to being disappointed with my photos that I didn't bother looking too much into it. I didn't take any more pictures here, but when we did head down to the beach, there was just this dude going for a swim like it wasn't four degrees and windy as fuck. I didn't film him because, frankly, he scared me. I was worried that if he saw me filming him, he'd run out of the water and chase me down like I was John Connor reversing out of a parking garage in a police car, and he was a T-1000. After this, we stopped at a petrol station, where we were assaulted and robbed blind. Naturally, after I finished filling the car with petrol, we were on our way. Next day was the biggest day this weekend, and we were hitting the big time. Oh yeah, two towns, a combined population of almost 500, and one of the locations where they filmed some of the 2005 classic Chronicles of Narnia, The Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe. No brakes on this train. I'd also like to say that the aux in the car we were borrowing wasn't working, so we had to listen to the only CD in the car, Chubby Carrier's hit 1996 Zydeco album, Who Stole the Hot Sauce? It goes pretty hard. Our first stop on this exciting day was Duntrin, and against the advice of the one ominous old lady walking the streets who warned us not to enter the wetlands lest we meet our untimely doom, we went for a walk through the wetlands. Now, on our way out of the wetlands, a group of local street toughs started giving us some trouble, and as a way to defuse the situation, I figured I'd offer to take a group portrait of them. They agreed, and I took this photo. Does anybody want a... Uh... Close up? Close up, yeah. Three, two, one. This wasn't the first time film photography had saved me from grievous bodily harm. 
and I doubt it'll be the last. Soon after, we made our way to Elephant Rocks, which are quite literally a bunch of rocks in a field. I lugged my Pentax 645 and thanks to the Pan F50 residing inside of it, my tripod all the way around this field just to take these few photos that even if they hadn't been ruined by the speckles covering them, were average at best. I really do think Elephant Rocks are a cool location to stop off and shoot at. Whether it's sunny or overcast, the texture of the rocks is, it just renders really well on film. And to prove I'm not lying, here are some photos from a previous trip taken on Kodak Tri-X 400. On the way out of Aslan's camp, yeah, that Aslan, I took a picture of a rock. It actually turned out to be the best on this roll. The texture does a good job hiding the speckles that ruined the other shots, and I just like the minimal nature of it. No model poking their head half out the water, no neon signs, just a rock. I think that's pretty f***ing neat. Our last stop was Kurao, another small town with nothing much to do. Holy sh they have wetlands as well. Oh my god, that's f awesome. Out of the two wetlands we visited that day, I definitely think I preferred the first. Out of all the footage I recorded, this was all I had to say about the Kurao wetlands. I guess these are the wetlands on the, on the left there. They smell kind of stinky. Yep, they definitely left an impression. I snapped another few photos on my Pentax that simply weren't meant to be and headed back to where we were staying. Oh brother, the next day was Monday, which sadly meant that it was time to make the mildly inconvenient length to drive back home. After murdering the remainder of the Color Plus in cold blood and burying the body deep in my camera bag where no one would find it, I threw some Ilford HP5 in my Minolta and hit the road. As a final f*** you from the universe to yours truly, not half an hour after getting into the car, the sun came out from behind the cloud for the first time in four days. We did stop off a few times on the way home, firstly by this river where I shot some HB5 and contemplated why I even bother shooting colour film. And later on by the coast where I shot some HB5 as well as some Kodak Gold M120 and contemplated why I even bother shooting colour film. I don't know what it is about the coastline, but I love every single photo I took here. And that was the trip. I'm glad I finally have a medium format camera to play around with and I've been pleasantly surprised at how much I've been enjoying using the Pentax 645 considering it wasn't even on my radar when I was looking at buying a medium format camera. At the moment I'm scanning all my 120 negatives on a flatbed scanner with the default Epson software which isn't great, it's pretty inconsistent from negative to negative so I'm definitely looking into DSLR scanning in the future. Although it's always disappointing to have an entire roll of film be basically unusable, I do think I made up for it by shooting some absolute heaters, such as these. Did I get carried by HP5, coastal setting, and good lighting? Who's to say? And that brings us to the end of this joyful coming of age adventure, backdropped by beautiful Oregon landscape. Hang on a second, that's the Goonies script. Uh <clears throat> and that brings us to the end of this dreary road trip, backdropped by rural South Canterbury and rocks. I hope you guys enjoyed. Of course, uh, let me know if you didn't, and I'll tell you to get f***ed. Uh, check out the Instagram and all that good stuff. Until next time, I'll catch up, catch on the flip side.